Hello, my name is Dave Slimmer, and I'm coming to you from the science labs of Lander University. And what I'd like to do is take a couple minutes of your day today to show you one of the things that I like to experiment around with and, what, and one of the things I like to play with. And what I want to talk about are magnets and more importantly, the idea of magnetic field. Now, when I talk about magnets, most people know what magnets do. Most people have played with magnets at some point in their life. Magnets we know will stick to metal, will end up uh, holding on to metal, not all metals, but most metals. And when we talk about magnets, magnets have some common properties to them. This is a simple bar magnet, and you can see that it's labeled with a north side and a south side. Every magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. The idea of magnets together are, is a very simple principle, and that, that uh, ruling on that is that opposites will attract and lights will repel. So if I bring a north and a south side together, they will attract each other, they will have a force between each other. As I bring the, the opposite side together, the north and the south together, they will also attract each other. But if I bring two norths together, they are, that's a force of repulsion and they push each other apart. When we talk about the idea of the magnetic field, if I place that bar magnet down there and bring the camera in to show it a little bit, what I want to do is sprinkle some iron filings on top of that magnet. So I put that bar magnet underneath that piece of paper, and as I spray those or sprinkle those iron filings on top of that magnet, what you start to see is that the iron filings start to align themselves in a pattern. And that pattern that you see is actually that idea of that magnetic field, that, that notion of that magnetic field, which maps out the magnetic force around that magnet. So what you end up seeing is you can see that there's like a circle of filings that go around here. That's how that magnetic field is traveling um, on that piece of paper like that. You'll also see that a lot of the filings will be on the outline of the magnet because the filings, filings are going to gather where the magnetic field is the strongest, and that's closest to the magnet, and that's at that location. If I end up doing the exact same thing, let me get rid of those filings for just a second. If I end up doing the exact same thing, but I place the other magnet on, on the uh, cork board, and I use the cork board because I've done this in the past and I made quite a mess in the past. And I set them up like that. What you can start to see in there is you'll see the filings gathering on those magnets, but you'll see the magnetic field lines that are between the two poles um, of each of the magnets, going between them, in between them. That is, again, that magnetic field. And for those of you that are old enough will remember that there used to be uh, toys that were readily available where what you did is you took the magnet and you moved the iron filings around and you did things like put hair or put whiskers on, onto a smiling face. I tried to make my own just real quick here. And if I move that around, the idea is I can, I can go and put a beard on him. I can do all kinds of different decorations with it if I want to. My magnet is not super strong right now but you get the idea of it. But those of you that know me know that I don't like to just play around with, I don't like to just play around with typical things. So what I did is I got myself a much more powerful magnet. And that is this little setup that I have here. This is what's known as a neodymium magnet. And neodymium is a man-made magnet, but one of the interesting characteristics of it is it will hold on to its magnetic field for a very long time. And it's also a very powerful uh, magnetic field. So I have two identical magnets, and when I have those magnets, what you can see is those magnets will react between my hand, through my hand. They're powerful enough that that magnetic field will make that uh, attraction and repulsion even through a thick hand like my own. That magnetic field, again, I can do it with the paper and the filings. But when I do it in this case, what you see is because that neodymium magnet is so powerful, those filings stay right by that magnet because, again, that's where the magnetic field is the strongest. They will hang out right by that magnet. And what is kind of interesting about them is those magnetic field lines or the, the magnetic field between the magnet and the iron filings is strong enough to hold those magnets up and even operate through that piece of paper like that. So let me try to get these off here because I need these magnets in just a second. Uh, there's one. And there's two. So neodymium is a neat material, ends up giving us a very strong magnetic field. 
This is the same type material, only this is a much bigger neodymium magnet. So this has very similar properties like the small ones, but again, a lot more powerful, a lot more stronger magnetic field. To see the magnetic field with this magnet, what I want to do is introduce to you a substance that is called ferrofluid. Now, ferrofluid is nothing more than oil that has iron filings infused inside of the oil. What that means is that that oil is actually magnetic. That oil is magnetic. If I bring that ferrofluid, let me see uh, how I can do it. Let me swap sides with you here. If I bring that magnet near that ferrofluid, what you see is that the magnet, first of all, will stick to the container. But what you end up seeing is that that magnet, as it raises up, that magnet will actually bring that ferrofluid with it. If you take a careful look at it and let the camera zoom in on it, what you see is that it starts making some spikes in that liquid. Those are the magnetic field lines coming about because of that magnet that's right there, that's in that vicinity. It aligns the iron filings, much like it did on the paper, but now it's inside the oil and it aligns them into those spikes. That ferrofluid makes for some interesting things. Like I said, I can pick that thing up and you can see that that oil will raise up as much as I want it to. But when I pull that magnet away, the ferrofluid just drops down to the bottom. The one unfortunate thing about ferrofluid is that it instantly stains whatever it touches. So um, I'm putting it in this, I have it inside this plastic container just to keep it away from making a mess. But unfortunately, if I use it too much, it'll end up um, darkening the sides of the container and we won't be able to see it. But you can see that it makes those spikes inside that fluid, with that fluid. And it is powerful enough, if I set it up like that, I can put the magnet up high and slowly come down and you can see that it will start raising the fluid from the bottom. The, the ferrofluid will end up raising up from the bottom because it's a, that strong of an attraction to that magnet. Now, inside that container, there's a nice shot of the spikes. Inside that container, it's a little bit tough to see those magnetic field lines as it goes about. But that ferrofluid really makes an interesting pattern. What I have to kind of show that, to maybe do a better job of showing that, is an interesting little setup that I saw somebody did. And what I have here is just a simple nut and bolt setup, common, that I could buy at Lowe's. And then what I have that nut and bolt sitting on is uh, two very powerful neodymium magnets, like I've shown you. And then it's on top of a washer that's at the bottom, and that's really just for the glass effect to give it a stable bottom to it. And then I have it inside this container because I need this container to keep the fluid from going all over the place. But what I have done is I have taken some of the ferrofluid and I have it in this little cup. Now, if you can get that camera closer, that would be great. And what I'm going to do is I want to take and put ferrofluid on top of the setting. And what I want you to see is what happens with it as it goes on. So as that ferrofluid starts going on top of that bolt, or on top of the nut that's on top of the bolt, what you see is it starts making those magnetic field lines. It starts making those spikes as it does so. Can you zoom in on that at all? You can use the... Let us have a little bit of technical issue. Keep going. Keep going. One more time. I can move it back. Okay. And maybe that's a little bit better. So you can see those spikes on top of that. And as I keep on adding fluid to it, those spikes will get larger and larger. What is interesting about it is they will not go down to the magnet until I add so much fluid that the weight of the fluid drops it down to that magnet because that magnet ends up magnetizing the bolt that you see. And if you look, there's fluid inside the, the um, rings on the bolt. But it will magnetize that bolt such that the top of it is the same polarity as the magnet. And as we said, the lights will repel, so it will push that fluid away. As I keep adding more to it, 
You can see that pattern develop. What is fascinating about it is if you give it just a little bit of a disturbance, that liquid is, is really like it's alive. as it moves around. I want to load it up. Give, let me add a little bit more to it and see if I can get it to fall down. If you go online and Google ferrofluid, F-E-R-R-O-F-L-U-I-D, you'll see that there's a lot of artistry out there. A lot of people have done beautiful photographs and beautiful figures with ferrofluid playing around with magnets and magnetic fields. Um, and you can get a little bit of appreciation. There you can start seeing that the fluid, I've hit the point where it's a little bit too heavy on the top, so that fluid is going down, will go down, and will end up connecting to that magnet at some point as it goes about. Now, as you see this and you say, okay, well, now he's done it and it's got that neat pattern. Let me see if I can shake it a little bit that way again. You can see that it's a very liquidy or very fluid substance to it. But when people say, well, how do you end up cleaning up that mess? Well, that's a great question. What I end up doing to clean up the mess is I take my eyedropper and I just go backwards on it. And I take it and I suck that fluid off of there. Let me just get a little bit more. And then what I'd like to try is once it's off, let's see if we can zoom in as close as possible and I'll add a little bit more. Yes? One second. So it will come off. Oops, there's a little bit of a mess. It will come off. But it takes a little while and it's not something that you want to touch while it has the oil on top of it because it does stain the skin for a good couple days when you do so. All right, you want to play with that zoom and see if you can get in real close. All right, that's pretty good. All right, let me try it. Let me try to add some and see if we can get a better view of it. dropper is about worn out. So you can see I can put it up at different paths. All right, let me get my other eyedropper because that one is worn. All right, so that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. A little bit about magnets, a little bit about magnetic field. Again, if you want to look it up, it's called ferrofluid. There's a lot of things out there about it. Interesting stuff. Join me next time when we take a look at a different phenomena, a different effect, and uh, we'll go through it at that time. Thank you very much. Have a good day.